Back in the film days, if you underexposed it, it would create a faded look. Today, you can recreate this matte effect in GIMP and I'm gonna share two different methods for creating it. So the main characteristic of the matte effect is it appears to be faded or muted and it's easy to replicate by reducing the amount of contrast. In particular, the blacks and the shadows and adjusting the black point. And the two tools you can use to recreate the matte effect are either the levels or the curves tool. So we're gonna take a look at levels first. So let's jump in here. And this is the image we're going to use. Now, even though we're going to be doing this edit in GIMP, we first need to fix the tonal range of this image. So we need to fill in the gap a little bit here, not too much because I think for this particular image, if we adjust it all the way to the right, it's going to start blowing out the highlights and ruining or degrading the skin. So we're not gonna to do too much. I'm gonna increase the midtones, shadows, and highlights by adjusting the center of our curve here up, and then I'm gonna grab the shadows and the blacks here and brighten those up. Maybe just a little bit of a bump on the highlights as well. So that's pretty much it for the tonal adjustments for this particular image. So once you do that, go ahead and export this file and open it up in GIMP. All right, so let's go up to colors and select levels. And the way we create the matte effect is by reducing or clipping detail in the blacks and the shadows. So we're gonna take our black point here and move it to the right and the image gets darker. So that is now pure black in all this area of the image. So we've taken all this detail and reduced it to a solid black color. Now to create the matte effect, we're going to take our output levels here and we're gonna take this marker and move it to the right. And the further it goes to the right, as you can see, it's going to get brighter. It's going to add shades of gray or a shade of gray, I should say, in place of that solid black. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and move it to the right. And there's the matte effect. Unfortunately, I'm not a big fan of this particular method. I know it's a popular one on YouTube and other creators use this particular method, but it's not my favorite. So let me show you the method that I prefer for creating a matte effect. So let's go ahead and cancel out of this. Now we're gonna go up to colors and select curves. So I'm gonna add an anchor point right here so I can restrict my adjustments to this part of the tonal range, which is the blacks and the shadows. There might be a little bit of midtones in there as well, but I'm targeting the two main areas in that range that I need. Now, this is the black point, like I've mentioned before. So we're going to grab this and drag it up, and it's going to begin reducing the contrast in that part of the tonal range from blacks to shadows. How cool is that? I love it. Now this particular method, I believe works much better and gives us that true classic traditional matte effect. Plus you can apply this particular technique on images that are much brighter versus this one. Whereas the other method will only work with images that has a lot of dark in it. But if you do have a brighter image, you can then darken it up by changing the shadows and the blacks to be darker and to increase the black point here. So if you wanted to, you can click and drag down here to make those blacks or those dark grays even deeper than they were before. So you can adjust this based on your creative vision. All right, so go ahead and keep this image open for the next tutorial since we're going to be applying an old school retro effect to it. Now, if you can't do that next tutorial right away, go ahead and save this file so you can get to it when you're ready to start that next tutorial.